Hello everybody and welcome to the fourth lesson on the organization of the human body. In order to complete this lesson you're going to need a book and you're going to need a pen. In your books I'd like to get down today's title which is Movement Muscles. And for your starter activity I'd like to answer if you can lift more weight with your legs or with your arms. I'd like to explain your answer and thinking back to last lesson what joints are involved in each exercise. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock. If you need more time Pause the video and when you're finished, we'll go through it together. Okay, you got an answer? Well done to everyone who said that you'd be able to lift more with your legs and well done to everyone who said it's because of the size of the muscles. You have much bigger muscles in your legs, they're gonna be able to generate a much bigger force. In today's lesson, we're going to explain how muscles help with the movement of the body. We're going to talk about something called antagonistic pairs, and we're going to identify four sets of those pairs. Now, we're going to investigate the action of a pair of muscles in the arm. I'd like you to take your right hand and place it on your left bicep. And with the left arm straight, I want to feel the bicep. And I want you to feel, does that bicep feel tense and hard, or does it feel relaxed and soft? It feels relaxed and soft. Then we're going to bend our arm all the way up. Does the bicep still feel relaxed and soft or has it become tense and hard now? It's tensed. But in biology, we don't say the word tense. We say that the muscle is contracted. With respect to the bicep, when the arm is straight, the bicep is relaxed. And when the arm is bent, the bicep has contracted. Now I'd like to take your right hand and pull it on your left tricep, which is underneath the bicep. And then with the arm as straight as you can get it, does that tricep feel tense and hard or does it feel relaxed and soft? The tricep is tense. Now, if we bend our arm and we feel our tricep again, is the tricep still tense? No, it's become relaxed and soft. This is an example of an antagonistic pair where one muscle does the opposite of another muscle. When we straighten the arm, the bicep relaxes, but the tricep contracts. And when you bend the arm, the bicep contracts, but the tricep relaxes. Now, what I'd like you to do is to complete this sentence. When I straighten my arm, my something contracts and my something relaxes. And then I'd also like you to complete these two questions. Explain what happens to the biceps and triceps when you bend your arm and suggest why these muscles always do the opposite to the other muscle. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock. If you need more time, pause the video. And when you're finished, we'll go through it together. Okay, have you got your answer? So when I straighten my arm, my tricep contracts and my bicep relaxes. When you bend your arm though, it is the biceps that contract and it's the triceps that relax. Suggesting why these muscles do the opposite to the other muscle? Well, that's what we're gonna look at next. Now that we've identified one set of antagonistic pairs, we now need to define what antagonistic pairs really are and why they need to work in this way. So when you straighten your arm, the tricep muscles pull the bones of the forearm downwards. That's why it becomes contracted. When you bend your arm upwards, it is the biceps that pull the bones of the forearm upwards towards you. This is because muscles can only pull the skeleton. They cannot push it. So muscles must work in pairs. And these pairs are the antagonistic pairs. When one muscle contracts, the other one relaxes. What I'd like you to do next is to use this diagram to identify three more antagonistic pairs. And as a challenge, I'd also like you to identify which part of the body those antagonistic pairs move. Now, antagonistic pairs are usually located in a very similar part of the body. So keep that in mind. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock. If you need more time, pause the video. And when you've got an answer, we'll go through it together. Have you got your answers written down? Our first antagonistic pair is the wrist extensor and the wrist flexor. These are found in the forearm and they move the wrist and the hand. Our next antagonistic pair are the bicep femoris and the quadriceps and they're found in the upper leg, but they move the lower leg. Our next antagonistic pair is the tibialis anterior and the calf muscles. So this one here in front of the shin and the calf muscles behind it. And these move the feet. Now we can explain how muscles help with the movement of the body by pulling the skeleton. 
We can also explain why they need to work as antagonistic pairs, because they can only pull, they cannot push. And if we include our biceps and triceps from the beginning, we've now identified four sets of antagonistic pairs. Now, there are some muscles in the human body which do not move the skeleton, examples being the muscles of the heart and the muscles of the stomach. I would like you to suggest why these organs need muscle. And if you need a challenge, I'd like to know what the difference is between these muscles and your biceps. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock. If you need more time, pause the video. And when you've got an answer, we'll go through it together. Have you got your answer written down? So the heart needs muscle so that it can pump the blood around the body. The stomach needs it to mix and churn the food that you've eaten. And this challenge down here, the difference between these type of muscles and the muscles in your biceps is that you have conscious control of your biceps. You decide when to move them. Whereas the churning of the stomach and the beating of the heart, you do not have conscious control over those. So we've looked at muscles around the body, ones that we have control over and ones that we don't. We've got one more thing I'd like us to do before we wrap this lesson up and we get to choose what we do for our last task. We can either write a tweet about what we've learned today, 140 characters max, so you can hashtag those keywords. You can write down two correct statements and one incorrect statement, or you can draw the most important thing that you've learned today. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the lesson. If you found it useful, don't forget to press the like button. And why don't you subscribe and press the bell icon as well so you know when the next lesson's available. You can also support me on Patreon and you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter and I appreciate all the support. I'll see you next time.